Welcome in everybody to part 58 of the daily health journey vlog. Um, today is again a more of a sit down, um, sit down video. I do want to say that there's something exciting that's happening tomorrow or rather today, but I'm filming, I'm filming in terms of uh, ahead of time. So I'm re technically releasing one today and then filming one today but releasing it tomorrow. Um, anyways, today we're gonna be talking about stress because I am feeling a lot of it. <laughs> Again, a lot of these videos are like video diaries for me to refer back to, um, not revealing too, too much personal stuff, but I do wanna document what's going through my head. And one of them is school. I, I voiced out what my purpose was in a previous video right here. Um, but something particularly about school and not so much about purpose is the money aspect. Um, because I am, I'm coming out of university with not a lot of money, right? Not a lot of professional experience. I haven't earned a lot. I do save quite a lot of, uh, quite a bit of money but it's still not enough to support me internationally, unfortunately. And so I'm trying to figure my finances out and you know, I'm still budgeting and keeping track of what I'm spending into, how much I'm putting into the savings. And that's great and all, but my capital still remains the same, right? I already have a projected amount I'll be earning um, just before I head to the UK and it's not gonna cut it. Um, which is not good. So that's why I've been looking for new jobs. I just did a follow-up call. I was really nervous. I was really nervous to do calls or something about calling people and following up. That's very scary. And I know you can relate to that, but I need to get over my fears. I need to try and get a second job, but with getting a second job, I'll be sacrificing my, my vlogs. So I'm like really torn up here uh, as to how I'm gonna increase my capital um, in doing so but even a step back from that is just how money runs my life right now and you know I cannot I cannot classify myself as financially free um, because I have to constantly worry about it. I um, worry about paycheck to paycheck and catching up all the time. And so I just want to do a disclaimer. I consider myself very lucky where I am in, in this point in time. Uh, a lot of people would be dreaming of the life that I have now. This is not me being ungrateful. This is just me chasing um, the next step into my, my journey and into my goal, which is eventually try and help others um, by means of my time, energy, and money. And so in saying so, at the step back, the money is controlling my life a little bit. I, I, I can't enjoy it as much. Um, most of my decisions, it has a root cause of money I'm like, where am I going to go to school? How is my life going to be in the next few um, little while? How am I going to get financially free and retire early? And all of these things are always in my head. And of course, if it's always in your head, it preoccupies your energy. It stresses you out. And a lot of students feel this financial stress during their studies on top of the pressure of performing well and on top of the pressure of like parents and their environment and so i was lucky enough that i didn't have to worry about that during my undergrad because i did receive a full ride um, so i was a scholar and i'm forever grateful for that i, I didn't know what i did to deserve such a, an amazing thing. But because now I am out of that safety net, I am now here supporting myself. And, you know, again, it all comes down to money and I wish it did not. I wish sometimes that I can do whatever I want 
at the moment and just discover what it is that I really want to do with life. But because there's a timeline to earn enough money to support myself, there's a timeline to stop relying on your parents. You know, you can't, and it's going back to the idea of the purpose, you can't go and discover things that make life fulfilling, right? You're forced to make radical decisions uh, of what you think is going to be fulfilling. Like for me, I, I think physio is going to be fulfilling. I know I want to do that. It doesn't pay well, but it fulfills me. And I don't even know if it will fully fulfill me. It just, I have a feeling that it will. And so I can't discover, I can't just go to school for physio and then drop out and then try another job. That's not possible, you know, because of the money restriction, you can't do things like that. And, you know, because of the system, the education system and how it's very difficult and very expensive industry, it's, it's hard for a lot of people to really know what they want to do in life. And so that is my stress. Uh, one of my stresses is just dealing with money. And so how do you mitigate stress? Of course, I, I don't want to talk about stress without giving you guys some, some insight on how to mitigate it, how to, you know, de-stress when it's getting too overwhelmed. And there are a few ways. And one way is to voice out your stress. Um, go to someone you trust, your friends, your family, or your guardian, your neighbor, your I don't know who. But go to someone and talk to them. Hey, here's what's been troubling my mind. And then, you know, talk to them about your ideas and your frustrations. You know, there are a lot of good listeners out there and even more excellent advice to be given by people who've acquired their wisdom through the years. And so and just be careful, of course, uh, you want to be if you're receiving advice, you want to make sure it's someone who has been it through all that, who's experience. You don't want to be given advice from someone who is inexperienced, who has nothing to really give, who is not where they want to be, because their advice is not relevant to your situation. And so just be careful of that. Um, but that's one way to de-stress is to voice out and not to bottle it inside. And I think this is a good way for me to also de-stress is voicing out my, my stresses on camera. And the second one is, of course, uh, fitness and exercising. Um, there is a biochemistry to it, and I don't really want to get into that. I just want to say that it does de-stress me personally, and it works um, because I'm focusing on something else, keeping my mind busy. Um, so focusing on the contractions, the movements, and doing it right. But that's another thing that's going into point number three is that keep your mind off things. Uh, keep yourself busy. Um, don't avoid the stress overall. Sometimes it will work itself out. Sometimes it does have to be addressed. But keep yourself busy um, just to lower down the intensity of the stress so that you have a clear mind and that you can concentrate on how to fix that stress. And so keep your mind busy all the time. Um, it's all about, I think all of these advices are coming from uh, personal experience so this is how I deal with it it's not actually a science-based um, you know sound proof that it will work but a lot of these have an overlying theme is that you need an outlet right I, you just need an outlet because our minds can fire so many synapses right so many thoughts ideas and it can crowd your mind it can cloud your judgment and so you want to have as many outlets as possible to just basically take some of those synapses and connect it somewhere else so that you're not overwhelmed right and so things like journaling would be my next advice and like i uh, i don't know do you want a sport you love reading and music and whatever else that you find fun 
just to distract you off your stress. And so as you're going through your journey, you need to find your outlets. Um, it will tremendously help you in achieving whatever it is you want to achieve because our minds, it's so beautiful, it's so complex, it can achieve anything. But at the same time, it is so fragile. You have to take care of it. You have to nurture it and make sure that it's in tip top shape because there are instances where you do break down, where mentally you become so drained and burnt out, right? Those are the, the side effects or the consequences of just not taking care of it to begin with. So it's always in terms of health, it's always prevention that you want to do to prevent any ramifications like um, a decrease in mental health. And so I know it's a longer video. I just, again, this is sort of my outlet. This is my diary. And so I hope that you enjoyed this as always. Thanks for watching. Um, go check out my previous video right here and go check out the rest of my health journey videos. Don't forget to subscribe and comment down below how you distressed and tell me, let's have a conversation about your mental health. What are some things that we can improve on and just have a really good life stress-free. Anyways, take care as always and stay healthy.